Hi, in this video, I will teach you how to import and export CSV files to SQLite database. So you learn how to read a CSV file and into an SQLite database in a table. And also, if you have a table in SQLite, how do you actually export the table contents into a CSV file? This could be quite useful, especially if you are working with different file formats, especially um, there are times when you have a large CSV document and you want to read it into an SQLite database so you can run some database queries using SQL syntax. It'll be quite convenient to do that. Or on the other hand, sometimes you might have some tables stored in SQLite database and you want to export it to CSV file so that you can load it in tools like a spreadsheet tool like Microsoft Excel or any kind of, any kind of spreadsheet tool that you might have and run some analytics or perform any spreadsheet like operations. So I will tell you how to perform these activities and it's quite straightforward. You don't have to write any Python code or any other language. You don't need any libraries. All you need is a SQLite command line tool. In order to get the SQLite command line tool, if you don't have one, you can always download it from the website. Let's say SQLite download page. We just go to sqlite.org slash download. You just go to this website. Uh, this is the official site for SQLite database, by the way. You can download the CLI tool for working with SQLite databases. Uh, these are available for a variety of platforms, be it for Android, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. You can just download the zip file if you're running on Windows and uncompress it. You have the SQLite command line shell available. Or if you're running on Linux, you can just install, copy this from the pre-copy this uh, pre-compiled binary, uh, uncompress it and use it. But I believe that most Linux distributions like the one that I'm using here already comes with SQLite available as a package. You can use the package manager to also install SQLite binaries on your Linux desktop. So I have done that in here. So let me just, uh, okay, minimize this for a while. And yeah, so we just uh, run SQLite. You get, okay, it's called SQLite 3, by the way, on my machine. So you might want to run it as SQLite 3. You get SQLite prompt here. So at this prompt, you can see there are a lot of dot commands available. That's one of the interesting features with this CLI2. You can run dot help to get the list of dot commands available in SQLite. There's detailed help for each of these dot commands. You can also look up the reference documents in SQLite.org to know about each of these commands. But I'm going to just keep it short. So I'm going to tell you exactly what commands I'm going to use for reading CSV file or, you know, storing data into CSV. By the way, uh, all these commands can be passed why the command line? So I'm going to show you how to do it purely using the shell, right? So I'm using the bash shell here. You can do it in any other POSIX compliant shell, or you can also do it in your Windows PowerShell or your CMD prompt if you're running on Windows platform, by the way. But I'm a Linux guy, so I'll be showing it to you on Linux environment. So this will work even on Mac OS terminal, right? Most of these concepts which I'm showing you. So first of all, I have a CSV document, which is a very simple CSV file called users.csv which has this particular data. So you have the first line that represents the header, the column headers, that's the ID, name, and role. And then all the successive lines represent rows for these values, like, you know, ID is one, name is John Doe, role is developer. There's another row which has ID as two, name as Emily Jones, and role as administrator. So that's how this layout is currently in this CSV file. So I'm gonna read this CSV file into an SQLite database, which I'm going to create. So uh, in order to create the table format for this, you need to use the create table SQL command to do it. This is one manual operation to make things more easier. So I have created a users.sql file, which actually has the syntax for the create table. The reason why this is a little manual operation is because in the CSV document, there are no data types or constraints being defined for each of these columns, right? So for example, I want the ID to be an integer and I want to make sure it's uh, unique. So I want to make it a primary key and uh, I want the name to be a string. I'm choosing varchar. Varchar is represented as text if you're working on SQLite. So you can also put text, but I'm using varchar of 32 and also the role as varchar. So for this reason, I need to create this data type and constraints. So that's the reason why I had to create this you know, command, I have to create this command and uh, that's why I stored it in a separate file. So if it, if you're able to create this in a separate file and uh, you can source it, I'll tell you how that, how that can be done. So if you're on the SQLite tool, the SQLite tool, 
There's a command line switch. A lot of command line switches available in SQLite too. You can look up each of the switches. They provide a lot of options and most of these options are meant for automation. So if you're going to automate a lot of activities, it's quite easy to figure out what each of these commands let you do. For example, in this case, uh, I want to run some commands, the dot command, the SQL command. You can use minus CMD switch to pass the command via the command line. So run command before reading SVN. That's what it says here. So let me just try to run this. For example, I can use SQLite 3 and I can say minus CMD and uh, I can say dot read. The dot read command will read commands from a file. So the file that I have here is users.sql. So I want to read the commands from user.sql and execute it. So this I put in quotes to indicate that's the option for CMD and uh, minus CMD. And I want to I want to create this table in a database, which I'm going to put it as a file name here. Let me call this as testdb.sqlite. As you can see that uh, it sort of executed the commands stored in users or SQL and it's running on the database testdb.sqlite. So if at all I want to see what all tables are created, I can say dot tables here. You can see there's something called users being listed. Now you can check the schema for users by using dot schema users. As you can see here. But that's not just what I want. I just have the table structure, but what about the table data? I also want to read the table data. For that, you can run the dot import command. I'm going to show you in a single command line how to do this. So I'm going to quit. I'm going to delete this file, which is being created by now. Testdb.sqlite. I'm going to delete it. And uh, I can also make some modification. If at all, I want to execute on existing database and I want to create a table. If the table does not exist, you can use the clause create table if not exists users. You can use a clause. That modification can be done. Let me just make that change here. So I'll just use go to users or SQL and I can use create table if not exists users. So the table is already there. It's just going to ignore this command. Assuming the table structure is intact, matching the CSV document, but otherwise it's going to create a new table called users if the table does not exist, right? So this will work on an existing database, assuming that the table structure is sort of known to you, right? So having said this, uh, I'm just going to run the command this time, SQLite 3, and I can use minus CMD, and I'm going to use uh, dot read users dot SQL. This will read from this particular table for particular file, the SQL file and execute the create table query, which will create a table called users. But after that, I also want to run another command for so put minus CMD again. And this time I'll say dot import. The dot import command can be used to import from any file uh, which contains data as contents for the table, right? If you want to take table data from any file, you can use dot import command. Dot import provides a variety of options. <coughs> Sorry, but the option that I'm going to use is minus CSV for that. I say dot import and uh, type the file name users or CSV. And the next option is on to which table. The table name which we used is users. So I'm going to use users. That's the table that we created, right? We can see that right here, create table users. So this table name is what I'm representing here. And because the file is a CSV format file, I use minus CSV as an option that is important. And also another important switch I'm going to use is minus skip. One, the reason is because the CSV file that I showed you, uh, let me just scroll back and see if it's still there. Mm, maybe, yep, you can see it right here. When I do a cat user or CSV, the first line represents the header, right? It's a header column. You would don't want the header to be stored as data. So that's the reason I want to skip the first row. For that, I use minus skip one. If you want to skip the first two rows, you say minus skip two, plus three rows, minus skip three, depending on your CSV format. You can skip a couple of rows. So I'm using that option here. So to summarize, I use dot import, user or CSV, the file name, that's the CSV file, the table name, minus CSV to indicate that the file format is a CSV format file. And I want to skip the first line from the CSV file. The first row will be skipped. And then I can just represent the database name. Let's call this again testdb.sqlite this time. 
I deleted the database earlier, I guess. So run this now. The execute C command, and you're at the SQL prompt, SQLite prompt. Now we can verify. We can just do a dot tables. You can see users table is created, dot schema, and users will show you the schema for the users table, how it is being how is this how is this table created. And if you want to see the contents of this table, you can run the select query. You can say select star from users. And we got the data here. So you can use this simple one-liner command to import a CSV file into a table in SQLite. To summarize, just use SQLite minus CMD. And this is for creating a table structure. If you already have a table structure intact, you can ignore this particular option. You can use minus CMD dot import the CSV file name, the table name, and use minus CSV switch to indicate that the file format is a CSV file format. It does support JSON also. So you can use minus JSON if you want to, right? And you can use minus skip one to skip the first line, right? If your CSV file does not have any headers, you can ignore the minus skip one. It's going to work, right? And then specify the database name, which is the testdb.sqlite. Now I showed you how to import contents of CSV into SQLite database into a table called users. But how do you do the opposite? I already have this data in users. I want to store this into a CSV document. Well, you can actually use dot mode command in the SQLite or dot Excel command and all that. But I'm going to show it in the typical command line. So if you're a, if you're a shell user, you want to do it on the command line. The way you do it, if you're going to use bash, it's more simplified. You can use a here string, which is very, very convenient. But I want to show you how to do it uh, if you're using other shells like fish and you know older generation POSIX compliant shell, which does not have all the bash-like syntax. So I'm going to show you both options. First, I'll show you the way, way you do it in bash shell. So here, assuming that I wanted, to, I have a users table and I want to store the users user table contents into a CSV file, a new CSV file this time, I can just run this command. SQLite 3 and I can use, uh, you know, um, minus CSV, that's it, minus CSV and uh, you can specify the database name, um, testdb.sqlite and very important, this is where the bash shortcuts come in. You can use triple less than prompt, which is called as a here string notation that is like input redirection from a string. Rather than reading from standard input, read from the command line and feed it as the command to SQLite, right? That's what it does. Then run select star from users. Remember, you can use sophisticated select, select queries like select name, comma, role from users where role is equal to developer. All those queries will work. You can use any queries. Assuming that's going to give you some output, the output will be in the CSV format with a minus CSV switch that I passed to SQLite 3 tool. And when I run this, by default, the output is printed on standard output, but I want this output to go to a file, another CSV file. You can say maybe greater than users2.csv. That's it. Done. Right? So if you just do a cat users2.csv, now we have the contents stored in a CSV document. Now, some of you might ask, what if this triple greater than syntax is not supported in your shell? In such a case, I think most POSIX compliant shell, I believe even your Windows command line supports this feature where you can actually run the same command this way, but you can say echo select star from users. This is the command I want to execute. I'm not sure the semicolon is compulsory, but I'm going to keep it there, right? And uh, pipe SQLite 3 minus CSV and the database name testdb.sqlite. You got the same output. You can also, also redirect this to a file by putting a greater than maybe users3.csv. And as usual, you can see users3.csv will now contain the table contents stored in CSV file format, which you can now use your favorite spreadsheet tool and read it through, right? You can also uh, some people say I, this is very convenient to use with pandas, but I think pandas can actually read SQLite database on its own. So if you're going to be using pandas, don't worry about this. But uh, in Python, uh, if you're using pandas framework in Python, but 
if you are going to use some tools like you know google spreadsheet or libre excel you know libre office spreadsheet or if you're going to be using uh, you know ms excel or any of these kind of spreadsheet tools uh, they understand csv file format there are a variety of tools that support csv file format but if your data is stored in sqlite database you can use this trick to create a csv file so that the tools can read them right so this is how you can import and export to and from csv to sqlite database just to summarize the command to import a csv document into sqlite is this so you can run sqlite 3 minus cmd the dot read user to sql if you want to create the table and the table structure is defined in the user to sql minus cmd again the important part is this one right minus cmd dot import user to csv the csv file that you're going to read from and to which table the table name that is users and minus csv to read it in csv format and minus skip one you want to skip the first row from the csv document and the database name of course so this will take care of importing from a csv file into your table and you want to export it the command that we used one option is this this works with bash but if you're using any other variations of shells which does not support the triple less than here string format i don't know fish does not support it some simplistic bone compatible shells will not support this such cases you can try out this option where you use the command pipelines where you can use echo select star from users pipe sqli3 minus csv database name this will take care of you know uh, exporting this to a csv file right exporting uh, the table contents to a csv file i hope you found this uh, video useful there are a lot of other options i, I recommend you to also explore the minus json switch which allows you to import and export to and from json i could make a video on that but i think it's almost similar to the csv right so i hope you found this video useful if you do like this video do hit the like button subscribe so see you in the next one right thank you very much